Uh, so Karen Furmanyuk, I'm a product management director for um, our organization, one of a couple of uh, directors. My kind of focus is basically employee enablement, so kind of all corporate tools that uh, enable our people, and Planisware happens to be in my world and um, was instrumental in deploying it. Steve Ruby, our Chief Product Officer, so been heading up our product management office since we started it in 2019, so not too long before we engaged Planisware. McKinstry is a 60-year-old company that started as a plumbing contractor in the Seattle area. Um, we've since grown up to a, a complete mechanical electrical plumbing uh, business in the Pacific Northwest focused on large commercial buildings and data centers, um, heavily focused on high performance buildings and design build, um, you know, got a unique position in the ability to attack uh, building carbon use within the industry. So we do a lot of renewables, a lot of net zero buildings and high performance buildings. Um, we're also a, a national firm doing consulting for owners, so we do everything from capital planning to uh, monitoring control systems and data out of buildings to help improve performance over time. Um, so there's not much we don't do for large commercial buildings, um, and uh, you know the, the owners obviously that um, are responsible for those large portfolios and the long-term environmental impact, cost uh, of operations of those facilities. You know, for many years, our organization was always kind of approached and we were looking for a resource management tool. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we never really even thought about looking for a PPM tool to, you know, solve our problem. We were looking for a construction management tool or a, a resource management tool. And, you know, we hired a strategic partner who made us, you know, think differently, you know, um, really kind of um, look at the problems we were solving, which was our people are our most valuable asset. Um, you know, we're a consulting firm, and if we don't um, utilize our people, then, you know, that's kind of lost money. And we had siloed, you know, Excel spreadsheets in different departments, and, you know, they weren't talking together. And, and also, um, you know, they, we have shared resources, so that they were, our resources were being double booked also. So yeah, national team, and as we try to make use of resources between states and and move people between projects, um, didn't have any common way to understand what that resource pool looked like, whether it was over allocated in certain areas. Um, you know, made it hard for us to make hiring decisions and you know give people new opportunities to work on projects around the country. Um, most of our business units are regionally focused, so they. They are responsible for their P&L that serves their region in terms of their people, but they're always encouraged, especially when they've got a surplus or a deficit of resources to share and collaborate with other, other teams. So I wanted to get to a place where we had better understanding of that. Initially, really, we heard it from our people. Our people were like, give us a tool to make us um, to work. We do, you know, employee surveys every year. And we were like, we need a tool to help us do our job. So it, it started with very grassroots, our people, you know, asking for the tool. Um, we did a really intense requirements gathering, like what problems were we really solving. We found out that once again, it's the same thing as resources, it was project management, it was we don't have visibility to backlog, you know, soft projects, so we don't have a view for like 6, 12, 18 months out. Yeah, I mean, we, we started the center of the target around resource management, right, accepting that that was maybe even the only thing that we achieved. Um, but for most of our teams, it's a not too too distant of a move from I'm going to plan some resources to well they have an hourly rate to well that's a you know large portion of your project cost and oh by the way the project cost is your project forecast and add some margin in there and now you have revenue forecast so we you know it's a problem for us pretty quickly extends from resource planning into financial planning and forecasting um, 
portfolio of projects is nothing more than a financial forecast for a business unit. So uh, that's that's where the problem extended into. And you know, we I think again started with the resource management origin, no familiarity, no existing PPM mm -hmm. tools in the business. Right, we use some Microsoft project, but very fragmented. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, not not hard to bring our steering committees and stakeholders in and 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 look at the problem around resource management. So we we got turned on to Planisware from I'd say probably the Gardner Magic Quadrant. Um, so that's kind of a place that we start our search for some of our software. Uh, again, we weren't necessarily looking at PPM tools to begin with, so we actually looked at a few different quadrants before we centered around exactly what sort of solution we were after. Um, but I'd say, you know, that's probably where we first heard of Planus, where it was your your position on the on Gartner. You know, we and we looked through, you know, 15 plus kind of, do they meet our requirements and needs, different vendors that were out there, you know, scaled it down to three, you know, some three very well-known one more and just project management to kind of in the PPM space that could meet our needs and beyond. You know, we realized that there were additional things that we didn't know we really wanted, but we knew that we could see that um, the additional features or functions that planets were offered or could catapult us even further in our journey. Um, ultimately, we narrowed it down to two vendors that came in to do a, um, a presentation with us. And, you know, if I can say why, you know, in my world, why I believe Planisware kind of went, you know, kind of met the needs was, number one, I think Planisware team really took the time to understand our needs, like our business, because we are a complicated business, you know, we are a construction business that has three different kind of arms, you know, we have a construction, new construction that operates much like a subcontractor. We have an energy and technical services, which is our consulting firm, and the energy side operates much like a GC contractor. And then we have our facility or our services side of the business, which is facility management, you know, reactive and pre preventative maintenance. And so understanding our business and understanding our complicated model of our financials mm -hmm. and being able to present like here's what it would look like here's how you can do you know your projections you know just really thinking through and proposing you know those when we had our um when it was presented to us and probably another thing kind of in my world is um truly the the e-learning aspect gave us a leg up because the e-learning module, even though we didn't have to create all, we did supplement with some of our, here's how you do it at McKinstry, we were able to utilize that initially. Yeah, so obviously the project module and the Gantt is top of our list, so our resource plans and, uh, and financials start with building the cost forecast. Um, we went pretty heavy into the data module in order to accomplish a cost build out screen that, that your team built for us. Um, so custom approach to the way that we extend on the, the Gantt chart module to provide additional information about hard costs, um, you know, equipment, uh, material cost and that sort of thing on our projects. We use the P&L functionality within the tool. Um, I think we're a little bit unique amongst most of your customer base and that our projects are customer facing revenue uh, generating projects. Um, and we use it for the, the profit calculation of, of revenue on those projects, um, which again, we can then aggregate to represent a portfolio or a department level forecast. Um, so those are amongst the top things. Yeah, we use the resources. Mm -hmm. We use the resource module a lot. We, you know, basically the bottleneck has, has mm -hmm. really been able to um, give us some visibility on different types of stacking portfolio. And we've actually, um, you know, uh, created a lot of the portfolio using the portfolio modules and a lot of the um, kind of the out of the box, um, you know, reports in there for our business unit managers and operational managers to easily see based on their book of business, you know, their portfolio that they pick, um, you know, where there where there's potential risks um, and they're able to, you know, identify those quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, is 
as you know, Musa, we had a chance to bring the team together and do two or three days of whiteboarding sessions there in February of 2020 before anything really struck us. Um, you know, pulled in key stakeholders from across the business in, into that session. So it was great that we had that opportunity. You know, from that, pivoted pretty quickly into pandemic mode uh, and, and you know, didn't have people coming into the office. But I think we got a lot of silver lining out of that. I mean, one, our uh, leadership support and, and business plans pretty immediately had us uh, just, you know, doubling down on the project and, you know, hey, if anything, if this is a slow time for construction, then we'll have more capacity for subject matter experts to gauge in the, the, the process. Um, you know, the other thing for us is most of the team that we had gathered there in February was pretty uh, diversely located. So myself being in Denver, teams in Seattle, uh, subject matter experts from other offices, you know, we were able to switch to a mode of a little bit more fluidity where people didn't have to plan flights in order to meet meetings and that sort of thing. And everybody gets, you know, got put on pretty even footing in terms of uh, ability to attend, ability to contribute to the project. Um, so I, I think it I think it went really well for us. Um, you know, and we we actually did two other major rollouts that, that same year of other software product and, you know, experienced about the same, and it was kind of all in about the same timing sequence. So I think it went great. We, you know, did a little show and tell, and we met with business unit managers and operational managers, and some of the, you know, the change makers that we would know who might take it, um, you know, help us catapult this in each of the different departments. And we had just come ask questions. We did a very high level uh, PowerPoint that just said, you know, we had this little blue, you know, blue bar, what was in scope, what was out of scope, so they could clearly see what we, the problems we were solving. You know, we had a lot of people asking for these additional out of scope things. We kept very solid with our message and, you know, Steve and I attended and, or I just would do it. And we did a very, I think we did in the beginning, I don't know, twice a week for about four or five weeks. We just showed up there. We invited, you know, repeat inviting these people and then through the project. Right. And it was kind of, you know, lesson learned here. I think we could have done a little better job explaining agile. Right, because we're a construction team, they do kind of waterfall, they plan and then they de um, deliver. But I would say, you know, if we could explain agile because they're like, why are these things changing all the time? I mean, that was kind of the feedback we got. And then after a while, after a couple of our releases, you know, because we had our users testing it, um, and they're like, well, we just get used to one, you know, so we should have explained that a little bit better. But I think once they saw that we were able to deliver, you know, nonstop, and this is why we were doing it. And you know, we could we could quickly pivot. You don't like that word? We can change that word on that next sprint. Um, but we kept it that same group that we are using now as our tier one cohort support. We engaged them from the beginning, and they were kind of our messengers out. We communicated a lot, um, and I think you know we just kind of kept with that same message. Uh, I think we're doing a really good job with adoption, but I think, you know, we can, because we've done a lot of really good stuff since we've kind of full rolled it out, mm -hmm. that we want to go and make people aware of the additional features and functions that we've um, given them. Yeah, yeah, so we've been on E7 uh, since February, I think, now. Um, and, you know, looking forward to um, figuring out what we're going to use PM Go for. I think there's some excitement around that. Um, our company's pretty diverse in terms of the types of projects that we chase, and we, we started with our customer-facing projects first, and as we get into some smaller enterprise projects, I think we're excited about that. Um, we're getting mobile in the hands of our people pretty quickly here, so um, looking to engage. Obviously in the construction business, a fair bit of the time spent on projects is in the field, at customer sites, you know, with the hard hat on, um, and looking to engage our people where they are. I think it's gonna be important to us. Um, risk management is a is an evolution that we're taking on. So I think the the, the out of the box risk management functionality is going to meet most of our needs. So that's more about the communication and change management and replacement of some existing risk processes that are in place. 
I also think the integration with Microsoft Teams uh, is really going to be a game changer for us. Um, you know, we are already, our you know, project files are in the cloud. We have Teams already, McKinsey Teams, you know, engaging with channels and Microsoft Teams to run, manage their projects. So I think there'll be some, um, you know, some incentive to, you know, be able to easily pivot and look at a communication that maybe when you're on planets or also if you're just in teams and you can, you know, connect those two, I think we'll get, um, you know, an excitement uh, from our people there as well. And I think we're all in. I think, I mean, I think we're dedicated to all in. You know, one of our thing was tool elimination. That was kind of our, you know, the PDMO's philosophy is like, mm -hmm make it easier for people to work and eliminate tools, you know, and that is that is our goal. So, you know, so if we could just say, here are the four tools to do your job or five tools, that is what, that's our goal. Yeah, and seeing even today some uh, components that you guys are adding on that people are using or asking for elsewhere mm -hmm. in the organization. I mean, specifically the strategy and OKR functionalities are concepts that our teams use. They just don't have a tool to deploy it now. So that'll be a, a reason to get you know some of our enterprise and department level planners into the tool um, where we really started with you know project managers. Well, I mean, not having an incumbent tool here, you know, one of one of the alternatives to Planisware that we looked at has significant name recognition in the construction industry. And I was a little bit surprised that, you know, for as many people as we've probably taken on that have familiarity with that that other product from previous companies, that there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm around it. Like, I know it, I've been there, I've done there, don't wanna go there again. So, you know, it was, it was kind of surprising to me, I think that, um, you know, industry name recognition of a product didn't necessarily get it any traction within our user base. I think they were pretty open-minded about looking at the features and functionality of the tool as it meets our unique business needs and not the broader industry. Um, you know, I think from a industry perspective, sometimes we refer to ourselves as a construction business because that's part of our business, but we, we really do a number of things around the built environment and, you know, universities and hospitals. And a fair bit of that is consulting work, um, you know, which are relatively small, simple projects, pretty quick moving, slow, you know, quick turn sales cycle. Um, work that needs to be expediently planned and executed and financially managed. Um, but not in the same way as a multi-year construction project. I think because we are, you know, there is no other company out in, you know, in North America that can compare to us. There are engineering companies, there are consulting companies, there are construction mm -hmm. companies. Um, you know, I believe that um, a value that would be for predominantly the construction or the consulting companies, the people who rely heavily on the resources, um, absolutely, you know, they should be the people looking at a PPM tool. Um, you know, I think that is going to, should drive them for utilization of people. And, you know, once again, people is a, um, a value and it's kind of in the consulting world that that is what um, is your money. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in the in the pure construction general contractor industry, I think, you know, you see a, a lot of scheduling and planning tools. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of those companies have dedicated schedulers and that's all they do. Mm -hmm. Because of our diversity and the fact that we move people back and forth between consulting and construction projects and across construction projects around the country, I think, you know, it's a, it's a necessity for us that we have a system mm -hmm. like this, um, you know, probably a little surprised that it took us as long to get here as, as we did to get out of Excel spreadsheets and mm -hmm. and other tools that didn't, you know, maybe provided project level at mm -hmm. most small group level visibility into forecasts, but nothing that, that provided resource forecasting at a, right. at a department or especially national level. Mm -hmm.